Fabiano Caruana takes on Magnus Carlsen at the World Blitz 2022. These two have had always interesting battles. They also have played a World Championship match against each other in 2018. Look at what Magnus does here. And look how he adjusts his pieces before the game, not worrying about the six seconds that he lost there. We have the Rui Lopez, a6, bishop a4, and now knight to f6, castles, bishop e7, the closed Rui Lopez, rookie one. Are we going to witness Marshall, castles, d3, that is the d3 variation and now bishop d2 stopping knight a5 in order to win this bishop h6 h3 and also h6 has an idea it stops knight g5 so you can play rook e8 that's what magnus does a3 bishop f8 and now the knight comes here he puts his rook on b8 these are all very natural moves in this opening as you can see the players are blitzing it out because they are aware of these patterns the way in which the knight from c6 is relocated to g6 when a4 is played you try to exchange these bishops you take it back with the rook a b a b caruana has the open a file but i don't think that is very relevant in this position black has sort of equalized out of the opening but white structure does look a little more solid he plays queen to e2 I think this is where the game begins. Actually, not really. Magnus still blitzing it out because he realizes that the position is literally not very risky. You know, he pushes his pawn. If you take, he wants to bring out his queen. His bishop is now opened up. Knight is well placed. Maybe could go to f4 at some point. Karuana taking a bit of his time, trying to think what is the way he wants to react to d5. He takes, queen takes and places his queen to e4 offering a trade of queens to Magnus. Now, Magnus can decline the trade of queens with queen c5, but then why would he want to do that? He decides to take it and pawn takes so that you also have space in the center. And now this is a very equal position. Rook to c6, you can feel that Magnus is kind of playing for equality. Also, the tournament situation is to his favor c3 played here and an interesting idea now can be p4 but first magnus goes f6 he solidifies his center maybe his knight can now move because earlier the pawn on e5 would hang these are the little small little advantages that magnus loves to grind and he plays b4 what he is essentially thinking is that after bishop b4 bishop b4 rook b4 the b2 pawn would get a bit weak bishop c3 but now the bishop is very well protecting the pawn bishop d6 now that's a little weird move because i thought he would go bishop b4 and trade off the bishops why did he put his bishop on d6 maybe it's just to solidify his structure here knight d2 where is this knight heading to maybe from f1 to e3 to d5 that's what karuana may want to do and magnus does the same he wants to also get his knight from e6 to somewhere knight to f1 played well it would be very difficult to imagine one of the players losing this position because they also have a lot of time on the clock and the position is also very easy to play but with magnus you can never really re relax he changes his mind he gets his bishop to b4 and now asks a question to fabi do you want to take because if you take my rook comes in and i attack your b2 pawn it's a small weakness that i can attack and Karuana can feel a bit of pressure. You can, you can realize that when the position is around equal and the opponent poses you with some problems, it's sometimes not so easy to meet them. He has some options up his sleeve. He can play rook c1. He can of course take the bishop. He can bring his other rook in. There's also an idea to just play rook a2. Uh, you don't want to lose the pawn on c3 so he goes rook c1 takes rook takes the trade rooks and magnus jumps in with rook b3 notice how magnus is making very good use of his time he's still at two minutes 96 knight to d2 now this looks a natural move but actually it's not good he should have played his knight to e3 but now after knight d2 rook b2 magnus attacks the knight the problem starts now 
One is that the knight is coming to c5. e4 is hanging. d3 is threatened. So Karuana goes knight c4. Magnus puts his rook one square diagonally to the knight. Now the knight cannot attack it easily. And as we have seen, the idea is knight c5. Suddenly the problems start to mount up. Also Karuana is one minute down on the clock. He goes rook d1. A very good move because you want to get active down the d5. That is the best you can do when you are under attack. And now maybe Magnus can go knight c5. Attack this pawn on e4. Also he has an idea of rook c2 which could attack the pawn on c3. So there is something to choose from. You can see Magnus playing around with the pieces and plays his knight to c5. He attacks e4. What does uh, Karuana do? Because you don't want to get passive, you know, once you start making moves like Rook e1, that's the end of it, you know, Rook a4 attacks here and here. It, it's not a good thing. You want to keep yourself active. You want to play the position. And he goes Rook d2. He offers a trade of Rooks. Naturally, you don't want to take because once you take Knight d2, this is just equal. So he goes Rook a4. Knight to e3, knight takes e4, played by Carlsen. He's now a pawn up, but Karuana is ready to jump in with his rook. Notice he's down to 30 seconds on the clock. So with the position being slightly difficult, Magnus also pressing on the clock. This is how an amazing blitz player plays. Now the point is, king f3, beautiful move. That's a very important defensive resource because now he attacks the knight. You can't take on f2 because this is hanging. Also f5 is impossible. The knight takes it. And although black can take on f2 with the knight, his coordination is broken and then the white knight moves in. And although you are two pawns down, g7 is attacked, c7 is attacked. And this shows why Karuana is such an amazing player. He finds the best defensive idea here with king f3. And you can see Magnus is not so happy because he wants more from the position. He wants that things somehow coordinate. But it's not so easy to make that happen. He's thinking between going knight g5 and putting his knight on e6 and taking on f2. Well, he takes it. Fabi has his move ready. Knight to f5. Excellent move. g7 is hanging. And he takes on h3. Now he's three pawns up. But Karuana takes back one. And now will he take back the second? So yes, now he's just one pawn down. Also h6 is hanging. And the position looks roundabout even. h5 played. Trying to save that pawn. But now there are a few ways to, to go. Maybe one is rook c8, king f7, rook c7, king g6, knight h4 check. You can play it that way. And the position is around equal. But uh, Karuan is down to 10, 8, 7. He goes king e3. Knight to g5, Magnus there not so pleased with his position, Knight goes to d6 and a very good idea to actually trade off the Knights uh, because then that would lead to an equalish rook endgame with the active white king, Magnus goes rook c2 and now knight e4 would have been good but Karuana with very little time goes to f5, rook c6, king f7 and he gives a check and there you see Magnus, okay that's a draw. It's, it's a look of a man who is kind of resigned to a draw, but King g6, and this is Magnus's last ditch attempt. If he takes on h6, he's going to take on f6. So he takes on c3, King d2, and now goes back. Wow, what a move. And Karuana needs to play g4. And you can see Hikaru in the background trying to look at the game. He goes King e3, blunder. He has to play g4. Now the Rook Knight is trapped, and unbelievable scenes here. G4 played, Magnus takes on H6 and he has won the game because Karuana loses on time. But even the final position was just lost. He had to play G4. This was a very important moment of the game. White checked on H6 and Black has moved his king to G6. Now Karuana took the knight here and Magnus realized that if he took the knight f6 would hang and it would be a draw. So he took here giving a check and after king d2 he had an option. He could take on g3 and go into a position where his opponent had a knight and he had a rook, uh, he had three pawns. But instead he decided for this small little trick with rook c8. 
and this is where his devious trap was set. He wanted to go rook h8 and take this when he would be a clean two pawns up. And that's the reason why Karuana had to play g4 here. Now, if you take with the king, f6 is hanging. If you go to h8 here, then I have g takes h5. And if you take h6 again, f6 hangs. If you take on h5, my knight jumps out. And somehow you're not able to keep this knight under control. So that's the reason why g4 was very accurate and necessary. But he went king e3 with very little time on the clock, which was a blunder. Because now after rook h8, it's all over. There's no way to get the knight out. It is trapped and black ends up with two extra pawns in the game. He just played g4. But after rook takes h6, takes here, uh, rook takes h5 with two extra pawns, white is lost. Life is full of exciting events. But it is our first impressions that we remember best. Your first diploma. Your first job in a big company. Unforgettable emotions from the first date. The first expensive things you bought when you got your first paycheck. And your first investments with Freedom Broker. Freedom Broker. Look at your favorite brands from a new perspective.